Well, good day, guys. So we're out here doing another swagman trip this weekend. We just hiked about seven kilometers along this fire trail, and we're gonna make our way over to this nice rocky outcrop that should give us a really nice view of the valley that we're in. We'll try and set up camp around there for tonight, and I'll um, yeah, cook up some good food. So it should be a fun trip. So yeah, let's go try and find a camp. Alright, so where I want to go is through there. As you can see, this place got pretty hammered in the 2019 fires. And the regrowth around here is something severe, so it's going to make it pretty fun pushing through all this. How's that for a backdrop? bad spot to spend the night. Oh mate, this place is just silly, hey. Just in every direction, you've just got cliffs and escarpment. Honestly, don't think this camera's gonna do it justice. Just have a look at it. Oh, what a gorgeous place. This is definitely up there, one of the nicest views I've seen, that's for sure. Uh, for those who don't know, this is a Caper D Valley. It's actually, I believe, the second largest canyon in the world. I think Grand Canyon's number one, but the Cape Dee Valley is actually wider than the Grand Canyon. And oh man, it is just breathtaking, eh? It is absolutely beautiful. Just looking down there, kind of looks like a, a scene out of a western, eh? Well, it's a very nice spot to spend the night, but we've got some pretty ominous clouds moving in. I think it's about time we yeah, find a space to set up camp. Now, finding a camp around here is going to be very tricky. Just have a look at all that regrowth. If it came here before the bushfires, I reckon this would have been such a nice place to camp. It would have had a nice canopy and it would have been just nice, clear undergrowth. But at the moment, it is horrendously thick. <laughs> so let's see how we go. Oh man, this stuff is so thick. <laughs> it is a nightmare. Oh man, this is a joke, eh? This is so bloody thick. Wow. This regrowth around here is absolutely off its head. All right, so that's where I was just before at the lookout. And I just bush bashed my way around to here, thinking um, this sort of rocky outcrop here might have a nice view and somewhere to camp. And although it's got a, a really nice view, it is just so bloody thick. There is absolutely nowhere to camp. So then we're going to have to bush bash back over to that original spot because I did see a, a kind of clearing that I could probably make work. This is hands down some of the worst bush bashing I've done, eh? This is horrendous. Oh. 
my goodness that was an absolute punish that was easily probably the worst bush bashing like regrowth I've had to deal with eh? that was just absolutely horrible it was like two to three meters high and just dense as anything I had to try and push through it for about I don't know like 300 meters or something so oh I'm so exhausted eh? <laughs> I want to get this stuff off me um, so I'm back at that sort of original lookout Look, it's not great here, it's pretty rocky, but there is sort of some clear areas where I might be able to sort of lay down the bivy or the swag and um, yeah, get set up. Oh, man, I'm exhausted. I think it's about getting close to 3.30, so I've only got about an hour and a half till it gets dark, so let's get camp set up. Rains just started, so I'm just going to quickly show you guys how I've got this set up for today. Um, so this is my new haversack that I got from Swagman Outfitters. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, and inside here, I've just got my water, my flano, first aid kit, PLB, and just the other bits and pieces you want access to throughout the day. And inside my dilly bag, I've got my food. Uh, I think it's got some gin and tonic, a beer. So yeah, all the essentials. And that's attached to a tea towel, which is then slung over the shoulder and attached to the back of the swag. And you've got a leather strap here. So the idea is you sort of carry about one-third of your weight in the dilly bag and then about two-thirds in the swag. And uh, also for those who have just clicked in this video and you're from another part of the world and have no idea what a swagman is, basically a swagman was someone back in like the sort of late 1800s, um, early 1900s. Uh, someone who would just sort of move across the country looking for work, going from like cattle station to cattle station. And um, this is generally how they would carry their gear and also in the early days of bushwalking, like the back in like the 1950s or so, before they invented uh, backpacks, they used to yeah, go bushwalking like this as well. So I thought it's something I'd sort of try and revive a little bit. It's a fun way to go and experience the bush. Obviously backpacks are pretty convenient, but this is just a fun way to yeah, spend a, a night out in the bush. So how about we get this off and we'll uh, get camp set up. And then yeah, so just right up inside the swag, I've got my other bits and pieces, like my Olsen 3x3 meter tarp. I've got a flint steel kit. I've got a pouch with like all my camera batches and things like that. I've got a ground sheet. I've got my clothes. So I've got a shamag. I've got some thermal pants. I've got a dry as a bone jacket, which I'll definitely probably need tonight with this rain. Uh, just another jumper. And then as for the swag itself, today I'm using the, the Corinthia bivy. And then inside this, I've got a Cedar Summit inflating pillow, then a Alton quilt which is rated to minus five, and then a Cedar Summit self inflating mat. Now I'll leave a link to all this gear that I'm using in the description below if you guys want to check it out. Well, not a bad spot to call home for tonight. It's going to be very nice waking up to that view in the morning. Uh, so it's about 4.30, so I've got about half an hour until it gets dark. So I think it's about time we grab some firewood and we'll get the fire going. Now, I don't usually bother creating one of these rock rings because you don't usually need it. But in this case, I've tried to clear all the debris away, but um, there's a bunch of shrubs behind here that I can't really clear away without actually pulling the plants out, which I don't want to do. So I'm just going to create a bit of a barrier and that should stop any embers going away. All right, so I got my flint and steel. Now I just noticed around here, there's actually a lot of quartz. And because in Australia, it's actually quite hard to come across flint. 
Whereas quartz, you can find this stuff bloody everywhere, especially around the sandstone country. This stuff is all over the place, and you can actually use this to get the spark. Yeah, so we'll use that with a bit of char cloth, and we'll get the fire going. Cheers to another epic spot. Man, I just keep outdoing myself, eh? I keep thinking I'm gonna run out of places to go, but man, there is literally endless possibilities for me to go camping in. <laughs> Particularly this area, bloody hell. Absolutely love it. It's such a such a picturesque place. So many little nooks and crannies to go camping. Oh, this beer is going down so well. But uh, anyway. Let's get some dinner on soon. All right, so for dinner tonight, we're gonna to make a pretty tasty steak sandwich. So it's got some uh, porterhouse steak, we've got some sourdough bread, we've got some goat's cheese, we've got some mushrooms, which we'll add some truffle oil to, we've got some thyme to add to the mushrooms as well, some red onion, and some balsamic vinegar to go with the onion. So yeah, let's get that on. some thyme and then some truffle oil First up, we we'll just add some goat's cheese. We'll just add some of the steak. And just some of the mushrooms. And lastly, the balsamic onion. Well, there you go. That looks so body tasty. I'm that keen for it.
Well, good morning. What a beautiful spot to take in the sunrise. Just in every direction, it is so bloody beautiful. I really do not know if the camera is going to do it justice. It's one of those spots you can just sit at for hours and just taking the view and be content. I really did not know what to expect with this spot. When I was looking at it on satellite and topo maps, I thought it had potential to be a nice lookout and man, this has beat every expectation, eh? Just have a look at it. I love this stuff, eh? <laughs> I've seen some pretty nice views in my time, but this is definitely up there with one of the best, that's for sure. But it's probably about time to go back and have some brekkie. How's this for a campsite? Not bad, not bad at all. Now if you're a bit limited with water, a good way to clean the pan is just grab some leaves and then just use that. Man, it is windy up here. I wanted to try and have a fire to cook up my pancakes, but I don't think that's going to be very safe. So I'm going to try and use my metho stove, but I think it's going to be even a struggle with that. But um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Oh man, this is way too windy. I think it's gone. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's so cold, the olive oil has started to solidify. Alright, well, I don't know how. It Evenly this is going to be cooked, but let's see if we can flip it. I need to get a spatula, hey. Oh, this is going to be, this looks terrible. <laughs> Come on. Oh. <laughs> well, a little bit burnt, but not too bad. Cooking over this isn't exactly the most even of heat. All right, so I've just got some dolce de leche caramel. Let's add some of that on. And just some maple syrup. Right, now that is a pretty naughty breakfast, but I'm so keen for it. Man, this wind is so strong, hey. Just coming roaring up this gully. I feel like it's going to blow the tarp away. Oh. You cannot beat pancakes for breakfast, though. Hey. Oh. It's so nice. Oh, she is windy and cold. All right, well, I think it's probably about time we start packing camp up and yeah, making our way out of here.
<laughs> well, that back one. <laughs> Kind of start with it's like a warm up. But, uh, got all my gear now, I've tied up the fire pit and um, I think it's time for me to boost them out of here. And what a view. Oh, I don't think I'll ever get sick of exploring the sandstone country, eh? Absolutely love it. But for now, I think it's about time to wrap up the old video. Hope you guys enjoyed this little swagman trip. I had a lot of fun making it and such a beautiful place to come and explore for the weekend. So yeah, as always, really appreciate all you guys watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hooroo.